It's time to accelerate. Hi, I'm your host, Andy Paul. Join me as I host conversations with the leading experts in sales, marketing, sales automation, sales process, leadership, management, training, coaching, any resource that I believe to help you accelerate the growth of your sales, your business, and most importantly, you. Hello, and welcome to Accelerate. I am amped up to talk with my guest today. Joining me is Jessica Rhodes. Jessica is the founder and CEO of Interview Connections, what I I call a matchmaking service for podcasters and guests. And she's also the host of her own podcast and as well as a TV show, Interview Connections TV. So Jessica, welcome to Accelerate. Andy, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to to be here and talk about podcasting with you. Oh, great. Well, that is exactly what we're going to talk about. So (laughs) maybe preface that by telling us you know, how you got started in this whole podcasting business. You, know, you are, as I told you before, you're becoming the queen of podcasts. So um, <laughs> yeah, I just got, got off the phone with somebody that said, you're the, the queen of podcasting. So uh, it's funny because I started in podcasting really as a behind the scenes person. Um, hadn't Didn't start my own show until um, well over a year after I was working in the business booking interviews. So uh, about three plus years ago was a virtual assistant. That was my first business being a virtual assistant for entrepreneurs and small business owners, helping them get booked as a guest on podcasts and then also helping find guests for their show. And as podcasting started to rise in popularity with businesses and entrepreneurs, there was clearly a need for guest booking um, for you know a long time. Hosts found their own guests, which a lot of hosts still do, or they just you know they're just interviewed when somebody asks them, which mm-hmm. maybe is like once a year, or maybe for some people it's like they have so many requests they need to sift through them. Um, but that's where I really saw the need is that people wanted to get interviewed on shows, they wanted to leverage podcasting and being a host and being a guest to build their business. But there was some, you know, they had a business to run. (laughs) Um, Podcasting is not something they wanted to do full time, but it was something that, you know, they wanted to really leverage. So that's where I came in is that I saw that guest booking, finding guests and then finding shows to be a guest on is it takes a lot of time. You know, it's a huge pain point and a huge time suck for a lot of entrepreneurs. So that's why I created interviewconnections.com to be, as you said, that matchmaking service for podcast hosts and great guest experts. Okay. So podcasts are hot these days. Everybody's talking about it. There's more than a quarter million podcasts, uh, according to the latest statistics I saw, which is yeah. is sort of mind boggling. That that yeah. yet on the other hand, also I think the statistic is that the average podcaster only puts out seven episodes before they quit. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, which sort of defeats the purpose of it, right? Yeah. So exactly. more people are listening to podcasts than ever. So why why are they so hot right now? I mean, what what is the need they're filling? I think that for business owners and and entrepreneurs specifically, they're really hot because it is building up credibility and the celebrity factor that increases uh, your exposure and your name recognition and your personal brand. When you host your own podcast, you start to grow an audience around what you do. And then people, your followers, your fans, your community, your clients, your prospects, they start looking at you as kind of a celebrity. And the power of celebrity is huge in business. When you position yourself as a celebrity, as the go-to authority, as the leader and the expert in your industry, people will want to work with you and they'll be willing to pay you more for what you offer and what you do. So people are realizing that, wow, if I start my own podcast, I'm the host of my own radio show, you know, I can become a celebrity in my niche and that will, again, grow my brand, grow my exposure, and ultimately bring more business to my company. Gosh, when you say it like that, I'm thinking I need my entourage. Yes. I mean, I'm a celebrity. I need an entourage. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, I I like to say I'm... Very famous in very small circles. Um, Well, yeah, and that's the big thing, though, Andy, is that we can all be very famous in our own circles. Like, I was interviewed, and we all don't, most of us don't feel famous, right? Like, I heard Chris Brogan, who's very well known Mm -hmm. online marketer, I heard him say once that, you know, he's, when he walks into a social media marketing conference, 
everyone wants their picture with him. He's, his room is full. You know, his keynote presentation is super popular. But if he were just sitting in a Starbucks in Boston where he lives and, and he says, you know, everybody look at me, they go sit down and shut up <laughs> because, <laughs> you know, he's famous in his circle. We're all famous in our circles. I was on a podcast um, last week and after the recording, the host said, I was so nervous talking to you. And I was like, what? Why? <laughs> and he goes, I have been following you and listening to your podcast. Mm, there you go, right? He was so nervous, but I... I wasn't thinking anything of it. So, you know, I have become kind of a celebrity to a lot of people because of having my own podcast. Well, and I think it's something really interesting to think about. When you think about a podcast, for most businesses, I mean, I would advocate for if you're a small and mid-sized business, if you have any sort of content marketing strategy or you're, you have got a blog, you're so sharing on social is you can make the case that actually having a podcast is, is even easier than writing a blog. I I agree. Writing for me takes so much more time. That's why I actually have somebody on my team that ghostwrites my blog. You know, she obviously takes a lot of the content. No, don't from say that. <laughs> Is that against the rules? <laughs> no, no, I mean, I'm I create kidding. all my own content. I do videos, I do podcasts, and I've actually written a ton of blog posts. But for me, I got to a point where I couldn't maintain my blog schedule because if it was up to me to actually put the, well, figuratively speaking, the pen to the paper, it just wasn't getting done. So I said, you know, I don't want, it's, it's my content, it's my expertise, but I just need somebody to get the words out onto the screen. And it takes a lot longer. And I mean, the great thing is specifically about, I work with a lot of podcasters with interview shows, you know, we're talking a lot about, you know, your celebrity and your personal brand um, and, you know, name recognition. But having an interview show is such a great way to build relationships with people in your industry, either other, like, potential JV partners or influencers or your potential clients. Yeah. So let's, let's take a step back. So hmm. we just talked about before, easier than a blog. I mean, everybody should be blogging, though they're not. <laughs> but hmm. you know, it's something you have to say about your company. As I said, you're an entrepreneur, you're a solopreneur, you're a typical small business, mid-sized business. Hmm. You don't have a lot of marketing resources, but you know you need to be getting uh, word out about your product. You need to be developing a, a position of thought leadership and authority and expertise around what you do so that you can attract the right type of customers, the right type of business at the rates that you want, as you talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, talking into a microphone is, is substantially easier than, than, as you said, facing the blank screen and deciding what I'm going to write about. Exactly, because usually when somebody, you know, we all have our different areas of expertise. Andy, you could probably talk for days and days about sales. <laughs> I could talk for a long time about podcasting and interviews and how to how to pitch and how to get booked and like everything that goes in. We all can talk for hours upon hours about what what our expertise is, especially when prompted by a couple questions. Like if you if you you know again, it's like if you have a solo show, you just write out a couple questions and then just answer those questions and just talk. Mm -hmm. Or being a guest on a podcast. Somebody asks you questions, you just you, you answer the questions and you get the content out. And then, of course, having your own show where you're interviewing guests, then that's even easier because you're not even really creating the content. You're having a guest on, you're asking the questions, they're answering them. So it's more of a facilitating a conversation. So it there, you know, it's harder in some ways because there's obviously more production. You want to think about your sound quality and guest coordination. But if talking comes more naturally to you than podcasting, it's it's definitely easier to just get the content out of your brain. <laughs> and, it, and it's an easy branding thing because yeah. there's a, a personalized nature about hearing someone speak that doesn't exist when you're reading their words. Oh, and absolutely. And so this is, you know, if you, again, if you're thinking, like, how do I take the first steps and to start you know, building my thought leadership position around what I do in my community, in my marketplace, you, you put this on your website and people still come to your website and plus you can promote it through your, your social channels. But it, it's a little more compelling, especially if you don't feel like you're a great writer. It can be a little more compelling to have this personal connection that people begin to form with your brand and you. Exactly. People, podcast listeners really walk away from podcasts after they listen, feeling like they have a relationship with the host because they're spending so much more time with a podcaster with by listening to their show than they would if they just read a blog post. You know, if you go to a blog, you're, you know, you're spending maybe one to three minutes, maybe less or maybe more if it's 
Good well, or you're bad. scanning for headlines first of all. You're I mean, there's, there's for a headline. form. There's a form to writing blogs, which we all know. Which you, know, mm-hmm. you have to have a certain number of. You have to have a good headline. You have to have a certain number of intermediate headlines, section headlines. Yeah. Because people scan, exactly. so yeah, people, people can't really scan scanning. a podcast. If when I scan a blog, if I don't see the bullet points, I'm like, I'm out of there because I just. I prefer to listen <laughs> than than to read a blog post unless there's bullet points that I can just scan and, and get. But I'm just reading the actual content in my own voice, in my own head. But when someone's listening to a podcast, they're actually hearing your voice. They're starting to develop a relationship with you. I have some really great friends online and, and now, I mean, they're in real life too. I've been, had a chance to meet them, but I first... Not fake friends, them. but real friends. <laughs> they're real friends. Real friends, okay. But a lot of them, I... First came in contact with them by listening to their podcast. And then, you know, became friends with them on social media, and then met them in person at conferences and, you know, have become real friends. But that all starts, a lot of those relationships start with a podcast, by listening to a podcast. Right. So now this next step is, you know, if you've made the decision that, okay, well, this sounds like something I'm interested in exploring, is, you know, you have to take it as a as an opportunity to demonstrate your expertise so you just can't turn on the mic and talk about anything uh yeah you, know, you have to think about being entertaining you have to think about being interesting you have to think about conveying a message and a, a point of view and and perhaps even some knowledge and information depending on what you're podcasting about yeah, I mean, that's definitely the hardest part about podcasting is having that good mix of being entertaining and also providing information for your target market. So I think there's a couple things you have to think through who is your target market, you know, and, and for most business owners, I would say, who's your who's your ideal client, you know, you most likely want to attract listeners who would potentially be clients or customers in your business. So think about who do you tend to work with? Who do you tend to serve and create a show that's great for that kind of person. And I, you know, at Interview Connections, we work with obviously a lot of um, interview-based shows. So, you know, having guests on your podcast to, you know, guests that you can interview who either bring complementary areas of expertise or, or, you know, topics that are also valuable to your listeners and your target market or what's really great is bringing on guests who are your prospects or are people that you want to connect with. And that maybe just saying, hey, will you go have a cup of coffee with me and just let's talk for 30 minutes? You know, when someone says, hey, do you just want to like, let's just talk for 30 minutes. If I don't really know them, I might say, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm really busy. Is this going somewhere? But if someone says, will you come on my podcast? I'd like to interview you and showcase you, you're right there having a conversation with them, but it's benefiting both of you because it's going out to your audience and it's also a way for them to get exposure for themselves. Exactly. Exactly. So yeah, you have to you have to be very conscious. You said the targeting who you want, who's your ideal listener, right? You used to talk mm-hmm. about ideal client profile. That's really who your ideal yeah. listener is. Right. And your content has to be focused and structured around to help them. And people have to keep in mind is that that the people listening to this is that uh, in sales today, you know, the first line of differentiation between you and your competition is you. It's a person. It's not right. a product. It's not a feature. It's you, the person. It's that connection you make with the prospective buyer yeah. as they form the perception of you as a prospective business partner. So podcasts really help facilitate that first level of personal connection, especially if you're speaking about something you're familiar with, you're passionate about something, you have some expertise in. Yeah. Then they really help create that perception and perhaps even become a buyer. I really want to emphasize, Andy, something that you said regarding, you know, having your personality out there. Let's just say you're a digital marketing agency. If you look at, I mean, there's probably millions of them out there. If you pull up two websites, two different digital marketing agencies, okay, this is what we do. These are our prices. And, you know, we're the best at this and we're the best at this. And they're, they both kind of look similar. But if one of those sites or if one of those businesses has their founder and CEO kind of front and center, you're hearing, you can hear them on a podcast. I am much more drawn to an, like, to an agency or a service provider if I feel like I know and I'm drawn to the founder, the leader of the company. Mm-hmm. If it's, you know, otherwise I'm just kind of price shopping and hoping that it's a, that your team is doing a good job. 
So I think it's super important that, you know, if you've got a, you know, a company and a business, if you are out there as the founder and CEO building up an audience and positioning your personal brand out there, people will be drawn to you because they're going to hear you and say, I liked you. I, you know, you were funny. You've got good information. I, I want to work with you. What do you do? How, how can I work with you? Yeah. And I can, I can speak from experience of guests that are on my show, on this show, yeah. that have said on many occasions is, yeah, I had people do business with me as a result of hearing me on the show. They had been on my, my mail list or they'd been on my prospect list and they hadn't mm-hmm. done business with me yet. But when they heard the interview, that's what tipped the balance in their favor. Exactly. I've got so many examples and stories of of clients of ours who say, you know, I, I had a guest on my show or I was a guest on somebody's podcast. And at the end of the call, they asked me how they could engage with my services. They asked me how they could, you know, how I could help them or, you know, vice versa. And, and so it just shows that when you get a client, most likely, I mean, the easiest sale to make is somebody that, um, you know, is either a referral or a, a current customer, meaning like it's somebody that you have a relationship with, somebody that's already feels like they know you a little bit. So cold calls are really hard. <laughs> and so if you do podcast interviews, you're kind of warming up the conversation a little bit. You're warming up that sales call. Yeah, no, absolutely. That's exactly what happens. So really, this let's talk about sort of the steps to creating a show. So mm-hmm. I'm sure we've convinced people the <laughs> absolute <Yes>. value in having <laughs> one in their business. Is is the next really sort of demystify yeah. and I'll make up a word here decomplexify yeah. the the process because it's as someone who's gone through it myself it's really not that hard. It's really not that hard, Andy. You're right, but it seems really hard because there's a lot of stuff to do on the front end. Okay, we got to figure out what the podcast artwork is. We got to figure out the name, the tagline. Well, let's go the, through that. So yeah, first yeah. you got you have messaging. What are you trying okay. to say? Yeah. And who who are you targeting, right? Mm-hmm. Who is that that buyer persona? We'll use the marketing mm-hmm. term or avatars people sometimes yeah. interchange with. You know, who is that person that you're targeting and what are you trying to say to them? That's the first step. Mm-hmm. And yeah. if you're in business and you're looking at this as a sales tool, then that should become fairly clear if you've done that for your own business as well, right? I mean, if you're already right. selling product, you should know who your ideal client profile is and this shouldn't be a mystery. Yeah, and if you have a, a brand already or a tagline or something already in your business, I would say keep your podcast aligned with that brand. So you don't have to create a whole new brand messaging tagline from scratch. You know, our um, someone that we both uh, mastermind with, you know, Michelle, is she has a program called Body Wisdom. So we're all saying that's what your podcast should be called, Body mm-hmm. Wisdom. Right. Um, so yeah, keeping it kind of aligned. Lindsay Anderson, she's got trafficandleads.com. She has the Traffic and Leads podcast. So you know, it's you don't have to. People really, really overthink the name of the show and the tagline. Well, here's a secret nobody talks about. You can always change the name later on if you're realizing it totally doesn't work. Right. <laughs> so you can change the tagline. You can change the name. I've adjusted my artwork at least three times over the past you know year and a half mm-hmm. as my brand has evolved, and that's sure. okay. Yeah, and so, that's an important point. Is this isn't a static yeah. thing. This is something that starts just like look and feel of your website or your blog or any of your branding material. This is this is part of that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So you got your messaging. Now you have to mm-hmm. sort of think. Okay, what's the format I want to use? Is yeah. it? A, am I going to just talk for ten minutes? My opinion. You know, write down as you said two questions. I'll answer that come up frequently. Or yeah. are you going to do an interview? Or maybe even a, a you know, increasingly a little more expensive option is a story format. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of different formats. So I think deciding, I mean, I think in an ideal world, we, we would all have these amazing like narrative based story shows, but those take a lot of time. Mm-hmm. So I think it's important to say, okay, based on, we can decide what your format is based on what is your goal with the show. Uh, like I know people that have an interview based show and it, those interviews are purely so they can have an opportunity to be interviewing and conversing with Tar- you know, targeted prospects. Sure. Um, so, you know, it's just an interview show. I'm moving into more, I've, I've just started recording and haven't even released yet, you know, episodes that are, are teaching format where I'm also including like five minute little chats with other people, but I'm doing more of a teaching format. But I have done most, all, the whole show so far has been interviews. 
a lot of my guests are clients of mine because it helps me strengthen my relationship with my clients who I don't always work directly with. So thinking about what is the goal of the show is if it's, if it's just a solo show, like we have, um, uh, somebody that we both know also is a grief coach. So what my recommendation is that is not probably the best place for an interview show. Um, people that are currently <laughs> grieving might not want to go spotlight their story. Right. Currently, lots, lots of tears, but a meditation podcast or, you know, a solo 10 minutes of like, listen to this in the morning when you're having a tough time. So depending on what your business is and what your goal is for the show will determine what the format is. And again, you can kind of change that. And then also determining what the frequency is. How often are you going to be releasing episodes? It's going to be daily, five days a week, three days a week, weekly. Hey, it could be, you know, just twice per month, but it just has to be something that you can pretty much maintain. Because if one month you're like, I'm going to do five episodes a week this month, and then the next month you're slammed and you only do one episode a week where you're confusing your audience and they don't know what to expect from you. So main having figuring out what the consistency is and just trying to stick with that as much as possible so you develop an audience that knows how they can rely on you. Well, and this is something that's stressed a lot in podcasting because, you know, we think about it from a TV and radio perspective. You know, we build an audience and people expect to have shows on at a certain mm-hmm. time. But this is really the same is true when you blog or you do your social media is is people, if you're building an audience with followers, they expect consistency. Yes, and if you do. don't have consistency, then you lose the audience. And so you may say, well, yeah, we'd like to do this weekly. Mm-hmm. Well, look at what you're doing with your blog. Look at what you're doing with, with other things that you're using to build your content platform. And are you being consistent with it? Because you really need to have this commitment to doing this on a consistent basis. And maybe this is the key that gets you to be consistent on your other platforms as well. But consistency is really the key. Definitely. All right. So budget. Yes. It's not that expensive. It's really not. And it... It's it, there's this uh, spectrum, you know, because it can either be, um, you know, run up a high price tag and you are, j- you know, just behind the mic, or you could be doing a lot on the back end. So it's really, a, I mean, I'm I'm always recommending and encouraging, especially business owners, to outsource as much of the tasks as possible because I don't think it's worth your time to figure out how to do post production on audio. <laughs> Like I remember opening up GarageBand trying to figure it out. It's not worth my time. That is not what I do in my business. So um, yeah, so I would say outsource it to an editor, someone that can put it through post-production and make it actually sound like a decent show, something that, you know, the volume levels aren't all over the place. And um, and then when there's some other stuff, you know, marketing, it kind of depends. It's case by case for each business. Well, let's look at the start mm-hmm. the basics. I mean, you need yeah. a microphone okay, and you, yeah. can, you can get a you need a you know a quality microphone and yes. and um, gosh I know there are resources available I don't know if you've got this on your website but um, you know tools like Podcasters Paradise which is a a paid community can join that has an unbelievably detailed easy to follow how to way to launch a podcast I'm sure there are others yeah. out there as well yeah there's a lot of you know schools and academies and places that will teach you everything um, I think for this audience. I mostly say find people that do what you need them to do um, rather than trying to learn it all all yourself. Um, you know, find that editor who you can pass the audio file off and they make it sound good. Find the person that can make your graphics and, you know, have them design the graphics. Well, I was talking about um, just the basic tools. Though, to, mm-hmm. you know, microphone you should have. Yes. Uh, the If you want a little small soundboard, perhaps, mixing board that you run yeah. into. Is it... Um, call recorder. Yeah, a call recorder. Skype, you can record via Zoom. Skype, Zoom. You know, what are you, what are you going to use for that? So yeah. just some basic decisions. And you can start really simple. I mean, Skype yeah. is what I think still is predominantly used by a lot of podcasters. I think so. Podcasters. Some people are moving to, there's this tool called Zencaster, which I've heard a lot of good things about. But when you start getting into stuff that's not a, you know, norm, it's not the norm, it's a little complicated saying, okay, you have to go to this site, you have to download this. But if people have Skype, then it's just easy. Just launch Skype and I'll call you there. But when you have to tell guests, okay, go to this program, download this application, that makes it a little bit more yeah. complicated. Yeah. And you want to keep it as simple as possible for yeah. your guests because exactly. what's make it easy for your to invest any time. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, yeah. And you maybe you'd spend 300 bucks max even. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, to, to get started, it really doesn't cost that much. It doesn't and you cost can that start much. 
you could start really basic. You know, I have a really nice high end microphone right now, but I did not start that way. I started with a microphone that I was a hand me down, <laughs> you know, it was a microphone my dad wasn't using. So I took it. Um, and then, you know, so you kind of evolve into the nicer equipment. So I don't think you need to start with the nicest stuff right at no, the beginning. No, but you can get a good yeah. quality, quality microphone for $79 on Amazon. Yeah, I think the ATR2100 is a great dynamic microphone. Yep. That's the one I tend to recommend. And because it blocks out, you know, cars driving by, it's that's what a dynamic mic does. And that's like 60 bucks. Yeah, that's my travel mic. So, yeah. All right. All right. So we've done branding. So now you, once you've recorded it, you've, you use some outsourced resources you can find online very easily that, that do this, um, do the post-production for you. And so when you've got this file, you're going to post on your website, uh, you have to promote it. Yes, you do. You need to market it. And this is where it gets, this is the hard part. It's really exciting to get the branding together and to start it and record it. And then you got to get it out there. So, you know, there's first your email list. I think that is the primary place that you want to be promoting your content is the people that have raised their hands and have already said, hey, I want to hear what you're doing. Like, I want to hear about what you're creating. Um, you know, you want to have a solid social media marketing uh, strategy. I saw my downloads for my podcast really trended up when I started using a tool called Meet Edgar because it's consistently posting old episodes mm -hmm. you know so a lot of yeah, times we use, we use that as well oh great yeah i mean when you just post the new ones you're getting you know downloads on the new episodes but you have all this old evergreen content so you don't just want it to sit in the archives so you know things like meet edgar are really helpful um and you can be creative with the different graphics and pulling out quotes from the episode and posting those and then your relationship with your guest is huge because guests aren't always going to be you know promoting this show a lot and i mean that's okay but i think the better your relationship is with the guest the more they are going to want to promote it and get it out there and so making it easy for them making sure the experience Experience goes really well. You treat them really well. It's a great interview, and then you're making it easy for them, giving them the graphics, the links, and and all the stuff that it makes it easy for them to promote it. Exactly, and perhaps most importantly of all is once you've recorded a podcast episode, you can easily get a transcript, yes. and from the transcript, you can break that down into blog posts and mm -hmm. tweets, and so you repurpose this content. So if if perhaps you haven't been as consistent as you wanted to be on blogging. Well, interestingly, your podcast, you know, you could publish your podcast one day and then the next day or two days later, you could have a blog based on that podcast, which serves the purpose of driving people back to listen to the podcast. Exactly. But it's also content you can share there. You can share on LinkedIn and all the other platforms. So really a multi-purpose tool for you that, that helps meet a lot of needs. Yes. Yeah. You can repurpose content so many different ways with a podcast. I know people who have made whole eBooks with all you know, the transcripts of all the interviews. I, I'm working on my eBook right now and I took um, at least one episode of my podcast. I had it transcribed and then kind of reworked it so it read, <laughs> read well. Um, and that you know added a few pages to my eBook. So yeah, you can definitely repurpose the content and that again, that drives people back. And also having the content on hand, like if you're producing episodes on topics that are frequently asked about in your community. So if somebody in a Facebook group asks, hey, what do I need to know about starting a podcast network? I'm always linking to the episode of the podcast producers where we talk about networks. So mm -hmm. I'm not just writing out my answer, but I'm saying, hey, listen to this podcast episode where we talked about this. Exactly. Exactly. Last segment of the show, everybody looks forward to this. I'm sure you have been as well, is I pose questions for you. The first one is a hypothetical scenario. And in this scenario, you, Jessica, have just been hired as a VP of sales at a company whose sales have stalled out. So the CEO of this company, the board, really wants you to get things turned around in a hurry. So what two things could you do your first week on the job that could have the biggest impact? I would pull up a list of all of the current, everyone who has purchased anything, any current or past customers or clients. Mm-hmm. And I would organize the list into, you know, the most recent clients or customers and also the, you know, highest paying who has paid the most money most recently um, and then just sort it that way. And I would look at what services we, we provide that each of these customers or clients have not purchased. So I could try to sell them other services. So, hey, you've been a member of 
you're, you've been a client of this program, but we have this thing that I think you could really use. So I would essentially grow sales by trying to sell the services or products that the current clients aren't yet investing in. Okay. Good. All right. So now a little more rapid fire questions for you is when <laughs> is that you... too long, Andy? <laughs> <laughs> Pardon? I said, was that too long of an answer for you? <laughs> no, no, no. This is no. That was meant to be long. This now these are the okay. compact answers here. So when you, Jessica, are out selling the services of Interview Connections, what's your most powerful sales attribute? I would say our most powerful sales attribute. Your, mo- your most powerful. My, my most powerful sales attribute. Um, I would say, posi- gosh, I don't even, can you give me an example? Well, of is what? it your confidence, your enthusiasm, your sincerity, yeah. your integrity? Um, I would say my experience. Okay. Um, and the fact that I've been a practitioner and, you know, I didn't just start doing this because it seemed like a good idea and, and everyone else is doing it. Like I've booked thousands of interviews and I have my own shows and I've done hundreds of videos. So I think people want to work with Interview Connections and want to work with me because they see that I've been doing it for a long time. Um, and in the grand scheme of things, not a long time, but I've been doing a lot of it in a short amount of time. You well, know? In, the, in the lifespan of, of this, lifespan this iteration of, of podcasting, yes. yes, that's a long time. I've, yeah, I've booked thousands of interviews, so I would say my experience. Okay. <laughs> so who's your role model in business? Um, my dad is my role model in business. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. Why? Well, I have seen him go from like literally nothing. Um, I was, you know, there as a kid watching him start and grow his business, hustling with side jobs to support the family. And I have witnessed from him how the how marketing really works and how consistency, um, being persistently consistent with videos and blogs and never just doing what looks easy. There's a lot of advice out there that says, hey, how can you get this done the easiest? But mm-hmm. reality, growing a business is hard work. And so he doesn't shy away from that. Okay. So one book you'd recommend that every aspiring podcaster should read? Oh, aspiring podcaster. Um, well, I would say for podcasting, I would recommend Jared Easley's book, Podcasting Good to Great. It is a book specifically about podcasting and how there's so all the different opportunities for collaborating and building relationships okay. in podcasting. So that reading that book gave me a lot of ideas for podcasting. Excellent. Okay, last question for you. What music's on your playlist these days? Gosh, I listen to podcasts so much that my playlist, I use Spotify to listen, and I'm usually on the, you know, the last one I like was an instrumental study playlist soundtrack because if i'm listening to music it's because i'm writing or working and i don't want any words so that's Mm -hmm. yeah so an instrumental study uh playlist okay like (laughs) jazz yeah kind of um some like electronic feeling some i'm not really a big jazz person it's too all over the place for me (laughs) like instrumental acoustic guitar something like that all right all right well good (laughs) well thanks for being on the show today and uh, how can people find out more about you and Interview Connections? Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, my main home base, all my content is at Jessica Rhodes, R-H-O-D-E-S, jessicarhodes.biz. And if you want to learn how we can work with you for podcasting, interviewconnections.com. Excellent. So good. Well, thanks for being on the show. Thank you. And remember, friends, make it a part of your day every day to deliberately learn something new to help you accelerate your success And one easy way to do that is to make this podcast accelerate a part of your daily routine, whether you listen in the car, in the gym, or make it part of your morning sales meeting. That way you won't miss any of my conversations with top business experts like my guest today, Jessica Rhodes, who shared her expertise about how to accelerate the growth of your business. So thanks for joining me. Until next time, this is Andy Paul. Good selling, everyone. Thanks for listening to the show. If you like what you heard and want to make sure you don't miss any upcoming episodes, please subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or Stitcher.com. For more information about today's guests, visit my website at andypaul.com.